late Jurassic Sichuan China was a rough place for theropods, and not because it had a particularly harsh environment, but because it was home to a sauropod that made even carnivorous dinosaurs appear weaponless, the Shunosaurus. This sauropod was discovered in 1977 by Chinese paleontologists, and it was quickly apparent that it was extremely unique even for a sauropod, as it possessed something very odd, a tail club. This club did not only give the Shunosaurus a menacing appearance, but it was also key in the Shunosaurus's almost complete conquering of its environment, as its other traits didn't exactly make it an ideal candidate for domination. For starters, it was fairly small for a sauropod, relatively speaking. Early estimates suggested that adults only reached 11 meters, or 36 feet in length. However, as more specimens were uncovered, the predicted size actually decreased, and presently, it is thought that a more accurate size would be 9.5 meters or 31 feet long, while weighing around 3 tons. Although this makes it larger than most animals, some consider a small sauropod to be 15 meters or 50 feet long, making the Shunosaurus particularly small. A part of the reason why it wasn't as long as most other sauropods was its neck. It had an extremely short neck, ironically contradicting the nickname for sauropods, long necks. In fact, so far only one other sauropod has been identified with a smaller neck the Brachy Trachylopan. However, the Shunosaurus's neck was not completely useless, as it allowed it to be an extremely effective low browser, giving it direct access to ground and mid-level vegetation. The lower down vegetation appears to have consisted of a lot of tough and fibrous plants, as Shunosaurus also sported a deep and broad skull that was filled with thick, tough teeth. Its jaws were also heavily angled upwards, allowing the Shunosaurus to use its mouth as garden shears on even the roughest of vegetation. This diet probably did give the Shunosaurus some advantage over some of the larger and longer necked sauropods that shared its environment, such as the Omeosaurus, which outsized the Shunosaurus, being capable of growing to 20.2 meters or 66 feet in length. The diet provided an edge by giving the Shunosaurus a distinct niche, which would have allowed it to decrease competition and confrontation with fellow sauropods. However, it's unlikely that any would want to challenge the Shunosaurus, as it possessed a one-hitter Twitter, its club. The club tail of Shunosaurus did not only set it apart from immediate neighbors, but also pretty much every other sauropod ever. And at the time of its discovery, it was the only known sauropod with a club on its tail. Even today, some paleontologists believe that the Shunosaurus is the only sauropod with a club that was certainly used as a weapon, and an overpowered weapon it was. The club was located on the tip of the tail, and was formed by hard bones that were clumped together and could withstand extreme impact. Packs. Although, occasional fractures and breaks probably did occur. It's thought that the Shunosaurus would swing its tail like a bullwhip and strike any unfortunate victim with immense speed, inflicting massive damage and easily crushing through any bone with a direct hit. It is also believed that the Shunosaurus used its deadly weapon primarily to ward off large predators in the area, namely the Gazasaurus, a 4 meter or 13 foot theropod, and the even larger Yangchuanosaurus, which is believed believed to have been similar in size and appearance to the gigantic Allosaurus. The Shunosaurus would probably not have been either of these theropods' first choice during a hunt, as the club packed more than enough power to incapacitate both theropods with just one well-placed swing. Additionally, it is thought that the Shunosaurus's weapon may have originally evolved for another reason, to fight others of its own kind. It's theorized by a few that males would have routinely collided in catastrophic battles for dominance in which the club was the preferred weapon of choice. These fights would have been a risky endeavor for both parties, as despite their sizes, the speed and force in which they could strike with their clubs could still cause broken bones, organ damage, and internal bleeding. Despite the main violent usage of its club, not all of its purposes were based around combat, as many paleontologists think that the Shunosaurus also used its appendage for display, as well as a means to identify other individuals. With all the benefits the club offered, it may come as a surprise that the Shunosaurus didn't stop here, as its believed to have also had spikes on the club, adding yet another deadly obstacle for any theropod, or dinosaur for that matter, that would want to challenge a Shunosaurus. And whatever the main usage was, it's almost a guarantee that the defensive and offensive benefits of having a spiked club led to the Shunosaurus being one of the most dominant forces in the lands, which has been reflected in the fossil beds. After its original discovery, more expeditions were conducted in the formation it was found, leading to additional 
Chunosaurus specimens, while also revealing that of all the dinosaurs unearthed in the locality, Chunosaurus accounted for a staggering 90% of them, making it the most common and dominant dinosaur by a considerable margin. This number is even more impressive considering that it was just one of multiple sauropod genuses in the area. Furthermore, this wasn't exactly a 90% takeover by default, as besides sauropods, this formation has revealed that Sichuan during the late Jurassic was an environment rich in life and diversity. So far, numerous stegosaurian like the gigant Spinosaurus and Genosauria have been discovered, as well as over 10 different theropod genuses. Crocodilomorphs, mammals, turtles, and pterosaurs were also present in large numbers. This thriving land would have been a lush forest 161 to 155 million years ago when Shunosaurus lived. Along with a dense woodland area, this environment is also believed to have consisted of a large lake and a river that fed it. This river and lake may also partially be the reason why so many dinosaurs have been found in the rather small area, as through the years, the river would have picked up dead dinosaurs and fed them to the lake. The Shunosaurus covered this habitat with unchallenged numbers, which not only confirmed the success of its design, but also led to another unique aspect of this fascinating dinosaur. Because since its original discovery, the large number of recovered fossils has led to the identification of 94% of its skeletal elements, making it one of the best understood sauropods from an anatomical perspective. This has led to the confirmation of its club's existence, including the spike as well as its diet and short neck. However, despite being nearly 100% complete, there are still parts of the Shunosaurus that not many paleontologists seem to be able to agree on. The main topic being what kind of sauropod it was. It was first believed to have been a Cediosauridae, a family of sauropods now considered by many to be a wastebasket taxon. After this original diagnosis, contradicting studies eventually emerged stating it was not a member of this family, with some research suggesting it was a Euhelipodidae, while other research said it was more likely that the Shunosaurus was a fairly basic Eusauropoda. Perhaps once the completion of its anatomy reaches 100%, we may finally figure out which family it truly belonged to. 